there are a lot of ways to use today's exponential technologies and yet not be a platform if you do not have these networked multi-dimensional flows. So think of different ways in which you would think of companies. The traditional way in which the telecom industry worked was a pipe model. Even today, the telecom industry or is called a dump pipe. And the telecom industry, as well as the handset manufacturing industry, worked in a model where the producer created value and, it, and they pushed it out onto the market. Whereas if you look at the way Android works, Android owns neither the handsets nor the apps that are created on top of the handsets. First, it creates a flow between handset manufacturers and consumers, and then it creates another flow between app developers and consumers. And it internalizes all these flows onto one single platform. And that's why this is so transformative, because Android, the way it scales, the way it competes, is very different from the way a traditional handset manufacturer would have competed. We're seeing something similar happening with the taxi industry versus uh, Uber. We're seeing something similar happening with Airbnb versus the hotel industry, where one model used to work in the form of pipes. It would create inventory, lease it out, and make money on that inventory. The other model creates a network of participants which interact with each other constantly, and the platform enables that, that exchange. And we've seen that in the past with uh, social media. We've seen that in the past with the likes of YouTube, the Amazon Kindle publishing platform, we've repeatedly seen a traditional linear model of business being replaced by or augmented by a more networked flow of business. And this is the fundamental shift that I believe is increasingly important in today's world, the idea that you can look at your business, model it as a series of linear flows, and ask yourself, what are the points in this business where I can change the linear flow to a networked flow. That is the opportunity of the platform that is there in almost every industry. And the reason this opportunity is so prescient at this point in time is because if you want to create networked flows in business, you need to have a way to identify the source and the destination of the flow because you do not own these two things. In a pipe, you own the source and you sort of own the destination because you would have a connect with the retailer. In a platform, you need to know the, uh, the source and the destination from which business is flowing, and that is where digital technologies play a role. Because thanks to digital, today everything can be digitized. Thanks to the mobile phone, a taxi can be digitized. 10 years back, a taxi could not be digitized, and so you could not have Uber 10 to 15 years back. Thanks to digital flows today, any object, anything at all can be digitized, and that's what we call the Internet of Things. And so we can have platform business models in manufacturing, in oil and gas, in mining, thanks to this Internet of Things. So the reason digital technology is so important is because they can digitize the point, the source of production and the source of consumption, thereby tracking the flow end-to-end -end and internalizing that flow on the platform. And that's what's so remarkably powerful about the platform. If you think about the traditional way in which we used to hail a taxi, the, the, the interesting thing about Uber is not the fact that it aggregated taxis and passengers together, but the fact that it internalized the whole flow. The traditional way of hailing a taxi would be you would go out on the road, you would hold your hand up, a taxi would stop, you would get into the taxi, you would talk to the driver, he would uh, drop you somewhere, and then he would move out. And none of that flow would be internalized. Today, that end-to-end -end flow is internal, internalized. Your Hand hailing becomes an action on the phone. After that, the taxis arrival at your place, the taxis start off the route, and the actual routing end-to-end -end gets tracked on Uber so that it then allows Uber a whole range of data which enables the payment um, facilitation as well as intelligence about connecting taxi drivers and users in the future. And so the, the factor that makes platform businesses so powerful is not just the ability to aggregate all of these producers and consumers and ecosystem together, but the ability to understand the interactions that are happening between these two different participants. In the past also, we had what we would think of as platform businesses. If you think of the Duomo Milan, the central area uh, in front of the church in Milan, that's, that's, a, that's a platform because people would come there together, interact with each other, marketplaces would be set up over there. But the big difference is that the interactions would not be internalized. It was a dumb platform. It would just aggregate people. It would never learn from the interactions, and it would never be able to scale and replicate those interactions in the future. What's happening today is that in addition to digitization, centralized artificial intelligence is 
capturing all of this information about interactions and making the platform more intelligent over time. As a result of that, today's platforms benefit from something that is really unique, and that is the idea of the feedback loop, which is that the more a platform gets used, the more its usefulness increases for further users. If you think of any platform, there are multiple kinds of participants that participate on the platform. If you think of Airbnb, you have, hotel, uh, you have uh, uh, Zoom providers and you have travelers. And the more you have participation on both sides, the more each side reinforces the other. The, the test of a platform business model is not in its ability to use technology. It's not in the number of users that are there. It's in the ability of the platform to benefit from feedback loops. It's possible to start a website or start an app and get millions of users and not even have a single feedback loop, and you won't have a platform. At the same time, it's possible to start something, have only a few users, and at this, yet have a feedback loop that can enable you to scale from there to a billion users without having to use the traditional models of scale. And so very often, when people think about platforms, they think about millions of users. But the true test of a platform is in the existence of this feedback loop that scales the platform over time. Because of this feedback loop, all platforms benefit from network effects. Some network effects are positive, which is that the more producers and consumers on a platform, the more everybody benefits from each other's participation. And sometimes network effects are negative. For example, if you're a seller on eBay, and if there are too many other sellers selling the same thing, you get frustrated because your price, ability to price goes down. And so sometimes network effects start working in the negative direction as well. So what's really important is that if you're the producer or the consumer on a platform, it's important to understand what are the factors that enable positive network, network effects for you and that enable positive feedback loops for you on the platform to help you scale along with the platform. 